Hey guys, my name is Ismas and welcome to Top Channel 101. So today we're going to be looking at how to make sterilized grass inside Blender. Let's look at uh, what we're going to be doing here. View animation. Let's bring this up here. Uh, so this was rendered in Envy, but uh, the, this also works in cycles as well. You can see the, the grass is also animated in a way that uh, is light on the CPU or on GPU. Uh, and uh, we're not using hair dynamics here because that's really, really slow for the CPU. So yeah, let's see how we can do this. I'm just going to start a new Blender project here. Okay, now let's create a bunch of uh, grasses. So I'm just going to start with a plane, rotate this 90 degrees. Go to edit mode, shrink. Uh, this, I think at the top should also be a bit small like that. Uh, you know, let me close this. Okay, something like that. I'm going to add a few segments like that and I then move uh, this grass blade up here. And I'm, I'm going to make a bunch of these, rotating them because I want to create a single branch. And uh, you can look at the, the silhouette, how it's looking. Just make sure that uh, it looks like grass maybe make a few shorter like that shade smooth now let's work on the material okay so the first thing i'm going to do is uv unwrap this so unwrap using projection projection from view and i want to rotate this 90 degrees so that uh, uh the blades go from left to right now i can create a new material texture uh, i want a gradient texture uh, the gradient texture usually runs from left to right and uh, since we're using uv map since we already have a uv map set we can uh, that goes from left to right uh, we can basically create a gradient that goes top to uh, from bottom to top uh, in our viewport like that now this can be used as our grass texture just Yeah, something like that. Now we can have a plane. Subdivide this a few times. Okay, the subdivisions are not necessary if you're just creating a, pl a flat plane, but uh, because I want to have this shrink wrapped on another object, uh, that's why I need the subdivisions. I'm going to go to particles, add a new hair system. In the render, I'm going to set the hair length uh, to zero and uh, turn on advanced in the velocity. I will set the z to one uh, maybe less like that and then in the render we're going to be rendering the object and uh, the grass object like that perfect then i uh, can uh, bring up the scale up maybe a bit down like that turn on rotation yes randomize the rotation a bit you can see how uh, things are looking right now but uh, everything looks the colors look too plain so what i'm going to do i can uh, go to our where is our arena grass so this here i'm going to put it aside here uh, i wanted to have some shadow areas in the grass or color variation so i'm going to grab a uh, noise texture and on that noise texture that looks like that if i scale down you can see the noise give that let me just first add a color ramp here just so we can look at the noise more clearly see how that looks this is not exactly what we're going for uh, so what we need is to add some mapping i'm just using ctrl t to add the mapping and that use the object uh, to get the coordinates and i want to use the plane the emitter itself as our plane and you can see it gives us that uh, spot those spots are like that and uh, these are going to be very useful uh, for adding some variation in the grass making it a bit darker in some areas okay now with that I can multiply let me blend this I can just multiply this over the grass 
and we get something like that. You can see from this angle, it's starting to look like actual grass, a sterilized grass, and uh, the kind of grass you would see in anime. Uh, so I'm going to go to the particles again here. Turn on child pa children particles, simple. That's quite a lot. Uh, actually, it's not that much. But uh, we have a few gaps here. So to remove those gaps, we can increase the radius like that. Now, our grass is at the same level. So we can uh, bring the random scale like that. Yeah, I'm also, I don't also want, I don't want to see the emitter either. So I'm going to go to instancing and just turn that off so we don't see the emitter. Now, if we want to give this some animation, all we need to do, like, actually, we need to first bring back the emitter for a bit and turn off the particles just to show you how we're going to achieve this. So we have, make sure the mesh is subdivided enough, add a displacement, uh, displacement, <coughs> new texture, cloud texture, cloud texture like that, and I add an empty, like that and uh, for this empty it's going to drive the position of our uh, noise so of our displacement so let me select object and then uh, the empty we can scale it up uh, the issue with that is that uh, it also scales up the empty so at some point the empty is going to be too large we want noise about there uh, so we can, uh, if the empty is too big, we can go to the um, empty data and I just uh, bring it down like that. Now we're going to animate this. And this is going to be the direction of our wind. I think even just rotating it was, uh, would be enough. So let me just rotate it like that. 171. Okay just like that. Uh, now our particle system can go behind, under, sorry, under. Now you see what's happening. The noise is too much. It's 2.1. And uh, the rotation is also seems to be too much. It's still too, we, we need to slow it down quite significantly. Let's do make sure that this is vector. Now we can bring down the strength even further. Uh, we can instead of using the ro rotation, let me first get rid of this keyframe. This keyframe, just try moving this forward. Yeah, moving it forward, I think, gives a better animation than rotating, and that's what I tried in the uh, previous video. You can see what we get now. If you have some landscape let me just find one like this basically any ground surface uh, is that let me remove this keyframe like this you can just add a shrink wrap to this, add a shrink wrap to this. Set this to project. Now make sure that uh, it's above the particle system and above the, the displacement. Otherwise, if it's below the displacement, it won't really work out very well. Okay. Just going to, I think I need to scale this quite a bit. And uh, we need to make sure that uh, we are not rendering uh, the underlying underlying mesh. Let's rotate this. And 
Yeah, it seems our uh, displacement is too low, so let me bring that up a bit. Perfect. Now we have a lot of gaps. So that means we don't have enough particles. So let's try 500, 5,000. 5, Perfect. Of course, that's also going to increase uh, your computation power. But so basically, that's how you get uh, the sterilized grass. And I think I might be having, you might have, you can get away with uh, less uh, uh, particles, children particles maybe increase uh, the radius including increasing the radius of the children just helps out spread the children particles a bit away from the parent uh, which makes it much uh, which makes it seem like uh, which helps cover the gaps between uh, the grass now if we have some lighting Sun. A sky. Now, right now, the uh, the grass is not affected by any lighting, uh, because remember we use we are using an emitter here. I don't actually need this. We're using an emitter, but uh, if you switch other to uh, a diffuse, actually you can even blend the two so that if you want the grass to be affected by the sun, you just switch it to uh, the diffuse. Now let me bring this up. You can see. can make the grass shorter by going back to the velocity bringing it down but uh, that uh, because the particles are smaller that means you will need more particles to fill up the gaps so you can either increase uh, the children particles again that's why I prefer using larger particles because then I don't have, I don't need that many particles. But, uh, so yeah, that's how you make sterilized grass. Thank you for watching.